Hi. In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between your everyday motion that happens with the friction and um, frictionless motion, that the idealized motion that we looked at um, for talking about Newton's laws in chapter 4. Now, um, I'm going to be using the simulation from this website, phet.colorado.edu, or uh, FET. They have a lot of simulations, so that's why I wanted to show you this website, um, a lot of simulations for you to play with. I'm going to be using one of them that's called Forces and Motion to explain uh, how friction makes the difference between uh, what you typically see in every day and uh, how we explain motion, explain and describe motion. All right, so it'll take a while to load. All right, so I think I want to talk about friction. So this is the one. So here's me. And I can apply a force to try to get this crate to move. Oops, uh, let me turn off the force so that you don't see everything. Now, this describes your typical experience moving things. Let's say you have a refrigerator and you try pushing it. So you lean against it and start pushing and it doesn't move. It, you have to keep pushing keep pushing at some point you push it hard enough and then it begins to move and once it begins to move you have to keep pushing it to keep it moving if you stop pushing it comes to a stop does that describe your everyday experience with pushing things yes <laughs> all right so that's what you normally see and so that forms our intuition but so is it true that you have to keep applying force to keep things moving now what newton discovered was that that's not the case once something is already moving it shouldn't take external force to keep it moving if external force is zero acceleration is zero so why is it that when we stop pushing the motion stops the explanation is that there is external force and that's what we call friction. Let's show all the forces here. Right now there's friction force. So let me let it come to a stop. So when we start pushing, this is what happens. As we apply a force, the friction force increases uh, opposing the applied force. So we have to keep pushing harder and harder and harder until at some point it begins to move. Friction force has reached the maximum. And now applied force is greater. There is net force, so there is acceleration. If we keep pushing with a greater applied force, it'll keep accelerating, accelerating, and it'll keep moving faster and faster and faster. Okay, now when we stop applying force, net force is not zero. Net force is, well, given by this friction force. So this friction force or the net force due to the friction force is um, generating acceleration pointing left toward slowing down this fridge which is sliding to the right so this is your everyday experience with the pushing and pulling things now where there's no friction let's say this whole surface is iced over what actually happens is relative very different when you start pushing things even with a very small amount of push it will start to move even with a very small amount of push, it'll start to move. Now it'll accelerate slowly. So it'll take a while for it to start moving at relatively high speed. But even the smallest push will get things to move. This happens on ice, happens way out in space when you're not touching anything. Now, when you apply enough force, accelerate enough and get it moving. And when you stop pushing, this will keep going forever and ever and ever it'll never stop. There's no friction, net force is zero, so acceleration is zero. In fact, to get it to stop, you have to apply force the other way. You have to push, 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 just the right amount for just the right length of time to slow it down, make it completely come to a stop and stop. And it's sliding a little bit. It's hard to make it completely stop um, unless you have friction. <laughs> um, there's one situation where you might experience this. Uh, try this when you are in the, at the grocery store, your shopping cart is full and no one else to judge you. Um, start, try pushing the cart. When you start pushing it, it'll require a fair amount of force. Now, 
Once it's moving, you don't have to push so hard to keep it moving. You just have to push enough to balance out the friction force. Now, when you let go, it'll keep rolling for a bit. If you want to stop abruptly, you have to actually pull back to apply enough net force in the negative direction to cause enough of the slowdown. So this is the, the connection between your everyday experience and the laws of physics as described by Newton's law. We have to treat friction as a separate force and that becomes part of your net force. So I'm going to be uploading the chapter four exercises um, topics soon. So until then, have fun.